Oh, we're at a wonk. We've got a wonk on. Hello everybody, Dane and Biggie here, and <laughs> he's gone over there now. And uh, welcome to this week's uh, reading wrap-up. So I've just got the one book to report for you guys. So that is The Secret Adversary by Agatha Christie. So this is the first Tommy and P Tuppence book. I believe it was published in 1922, so it's very early Christie. Uh, I knew I was going to enjoy it right from the start because the prologue set on the Lusitania. Um, Tommy and Tuppence as detectives, they're not like Christie's most beloved characters, but I quite like the Tommy and Tuppence books. Um, I've read them out of order though, so it was kind of nice in a way to go back to this being their first um, investigation and seeing how they kind of, you know, got together and stuff. Lots of Bolsheviks in this. Um, you know, it's very much a product of its times, especially politically. Uh, but you know, it was written in 1922, and for that, it's pretty damn good. I gave it like a solid, probably 3.75 out of 5, and I uh, would recommend, especially to fellow Christie fans. Hello, I have two books to wrap up for you today. So the first one is over here, and it is, uh, where is it? Pericles, Prince of Tyre by William Shakespeare. It's one of these uh, Folio Society editions, very beautiful. I didn't find it as interesting and as gripping as um, some of the others I read recently. So I probably would only give it a 3.5 out of 5. It's still Shakespeare though, so obviously it's still very good. Um, but yeah, I just wanted a little something more from it than I got really, I think. And that's really all I have to say for you on that one. And here we have The Sneetches and Other Stories by Dr. Seuss. So this was a pretty solid 3.75 and it's got four stories in. So we have, does it have a listing? We don't, but it had four stories in it anyway. Uh, so we have The Sneetches and a few others, what, which, you know, this was very green. This is one about the green pants that ran away. What was I scared of? All these illustrations and stuff. Um, I like Dr. Seuss, I guess. It was, he was making me chuckle actually with his rhyming scheme because it didn't really rhyme. But, um, you know, he'd make up words and stuff and rhyme things that didn't really rhyme, but that like kind of looked like they rhymed, so doing like a visual rhyme, which I thought was quite cool. Um, so yeah, like 3.75 out of 5, and I'm looking forward to reading more Dr. Seuss or Theodore Dries or whatever, whatever you want to call him. Okay, everyone, I've got four books to update you on today. The first is The Science Fictional Solar System by Isaac Asimov, and this has got stories by Robert Sheckley, Larry Niven, Robin F. Young, Robert F. Young, Alan E. Nurse, Alexi Panshin, James Blish, Paul Anderson, Fritz Lieber, Duncan Lunan, Theodore L. Thomas, Terry Carr, and Arthur C. Clarke. So the blurb here is a superb story for every planet and more, with special introductions by Isaac Asimov. Um, and yeah, that pretty much sums it up. So we've got Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Asteroids, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and Comets. And I find it kind of amazing that I'm so old that I remember when Pluto was a planet and not a dwarf planet. Uh, overall, I did quite enjoy this. Probably like 3.75 out of 5. It'd be a good one to go for if you're looking to discover some classic sci-fi. Asimov was a bit down on himself. Uh, he didn't think he was a very good editor, but I beg to differ. I think he was pretty good at it. So yeah, 3.75 out of 5. Then I read Scrambled Egg Super by Dr. Seuss. Um, so yeah, it's just a Dr. Seuss book, you know. But I didn't stop them. Oh, but I didn't stop them because I know of some ducks by the name of the single file, Zumzi and Zucks, who stroll single file through the mountain of Zums, quite oddly enough, with their eggs on their thumbs. And some fellows in Zums, whom I happen to know, just happened to capture a thousand or so. And they wrapped up their eggs and they mailed them by air, marked special delivery, handle with care. It was okay. I mean, I'm vegan, so I would have preferred scrambled tofu super. But uh, overall, yeah, like 3.5 out of 5. Good one if you've got kids, I am sure. Then I read All's Well That Ends Well by William Shakespeare. This is the very stunning, um, bloody hell, what is it again? Folio Society edition from 1963. So it's got this really nice art inside. Uh, it comes with an introduction, really nice layout. So that kind of made it a pleasure to read. Um, it wasn't a standout Shakespeare play for me, but there were at least a dozen places where there were some really great lines where I you know, wanted to note them down and share them with people and stuff. So uh, overall, this one for me was a 3.75 out of 5. And that brings us on to this, which is Mr. Brown Can Moo, Can You by Dr. Seuss. So this one's very basic, really. It's more to uh, teach kids to learn to read. So rating time, I'd probably give it like a 3.25 out of 5, I guess. I mean, for me, that wasn't much purpose in reading it, I guess. But um, I am trying to read my way through, like, all the Dr. Seuss stuff, just because I'm kind of fascinated by it. But um, So we've got all oh, the wonderful things Mr. Brown can do. Blurp, blurp, slurp, slurp, cock -a doodle do Knock, 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 and hoo, hoo, hoo. He can even sizzle sizzle, he can do that too. Like an egg in a frying pan, how about you? Like tofu in a frying pan, tofu. 
Um, but it's quite cool because like it gets kids involved. Um, so I think it goes like, where's the bit? Yeah, like Mr. Brown can do it. How, how about you? And can you and stuff? And I think you ought to try. And so um, when you're a kid, you know, you can try and go like, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. that was me being an owl. Uh, so yeah, I read that. Okay, um, I've got a few books to wrap up for you guys. Um, so, first off, I finished reading The Hollow by Agatha Christie. Uh, this is a Hercule Poirot story, but although Poirot isn't actually in it that much, really. Uh, it was an okay little read. I would say it's like mid-tier Agatha Christie. I will be doing a full review where I'll be going through all these tabs in it. Overall, it's like a 3.5 out of 5. It was just okay. Then I read uh, one of my bedtime books. I read uh, Les Aventures de Puffy par Nucrica. C'est un livre français et je pense que c'est mm, assez bien. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's a uh, decent ish, I guess, like uh, French BD, a bande dessinée, which is like a graphic novel, I guess. Um, but it's like a, it's, an, it's a livre de rom interactif. It's a, like choose your own adventure, an interactive book. Um, so, you know, you'll be going through and it'll be like, Comment vont-elles se tirer de ce mauvais pas? Uh, and then you choose which one, A toi de choisir, and then you pick your page, and then you go to page, whatever. Paffy explique à Blatty que le champignon magique l'a rendu mal dessiné et tout petit. Anyway, uh, it was okay. The choose your own adventure bit didn't really add too much to it, to be honest. I prefer um, a Nukri car, just doing more kind of more traditional stuff I mean her books don't always have like plots from start to finish sometimes they're just like collections of cartoon strips and they work just fine too um, I really like a sense of humor though and that still comes across in this so I gave it like a 3.25 out of 5 and then I read a couple of Dr. Seuss books as like little palate cleansers after McChristy so I read uh, Dr. Seuss I can read with my eyes shut and Dr. Seuss's ABC these are both you know, 3.5 out of 5 really, uh, they're, they'd be pretty good for teaching a young kid to read. So I'll read a few of these. Uh, so this is from I Can Read With My Eyes Shut. I can read with my left eye, I can read with my right, I can read Mississippi with my eyes shut tight. Mississippi, Indianapolis and Hallelujah too. I can read them with my eyes shut, that is very hard to do. And actually, I will say, as you can see from that, there are some like pretty difficult words for kids in there. So I think it's kind of cool because of that. And uh, here we have from Dr. Seuss's ABC. It just goes through the alphabet, basically, but it was quite entertaining. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Goat, Girl, Goo, Goo, Goggles, G, G, G. And we're going to H. Let's have a look. Big H, Little H, Hungry Horse, Hay. Hen in a hat. Hooray, hooray. Big I, Little I, 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 I. I Ichabod is itchy. So am I. Big J, Little J, what begins with J? Jerry Jordan's Jelly Jar and Jam begin that way. Big K, Little K, Kitten, Kangaroo, Click a Kettle, Kite, and a King's Kachoo. It does vary from that sometimes as well. Like, um, so here's a P, for example. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, O, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Painting pink pyjamas, policeman in a pail, Peter Pepper's puppy, and now Papa's in the pail. Try saying that one ten times fast. So I read those, and then I read... Surprise Surprise by Agatha Christie. So this is literally just a short collection of her stories. It's actually an American edition. I, I'd not even heard of it. Um, so it brings together Double Sin, The Arcadian Deer, The Adventure of Johnny Waverley, Where There's a Will, Greenshaw's Folly, The Case of the Perfect Maid, At the Bells and Motley, The Case of the Distressed Lady, The Third Floor Flat, The Plymouth Express, The Mystery of the Spanish Shawl, The Cornish Mystery, and The Witness for the Prosecution. And I have actually read a ton of these, because a lot of these are from books that I've already read. But there are also about four stories in this from books that I haven't read yet. So I read those in this, and again, pretty good short stories. Agatha Christie, I do like this edition actually. It's got these like gre uh, green edged pages as well. It's a shame, I don't know why, but there's this triangle missing out of the cover for whatever reason. Yo, sorry, my um, tripod isn't here at the moment, so we're going to have to make do without. I've got a couple of books to wrap up for you though. So I read Wacky Wednesday by Dr. Seuss. Um, I particularly like the fact that this one inside it has by Dr. Seuss writing as Theo Lassig, um, which tickles me because, I mean, neither are his actual real name, but that one is closer to his real name. And uh, this one's cool because it's like, I ran into school, I yelled to Miss Bass, look, nine things are wacky right here in your class. So uh, for example, there's one of them. It's Henry VIII, except it's Abraham Lincoln. Um, 
and there's like a kid sitting backwards and a kid with no head on and stuff. So I like that, it's kind of interactive, it's almost like a spot the difference style thing where you go through it and you look at the wacky things, you know? So yeah, I gave this one a pretty solid 4 out of 5, one of my favourites of these so far. And then I read Julius Caesar, so this is the Stunning Folio Society edition. I uh, will be doing a full review of this as you can see from the tabs. But uh, spoiler alert, I really enjoyed it. I've actually been really looking forward to getting to this for a while as well. So, um, and there are like these beautiful illustrations like this one here inside. So um, it was a real pleasure to finally get to it. And um, I, I really kind of fascinated by the story of Julius Caesar and kind of what happened to him, you know. So um, yeah, I gave it a four out of five. And I like there's a, a note in the uh, introduction that says it's a good idea to, if you can, see this one night and then see Antony and Cleopatra the next night because then you get a fuller idea of the scale of it and uh, Shakespeare's vision, which I thought was cool. Oh well, we'll go through these anyway. So I've read, I've got three Dr. Seuss books. I'll read you a page from each of them to give you a feel. So this is, I wish I had duck feet. So, so if I can't have duck feet, I'll have something else instead. I know what, I wish I had two horns upon my head. I wish I had two deer horns, they would be a lot of fun. Then I could wear ten hats up there. Big Bill can just wear one. This one was like a 3.5 out of 5. Um, then we have 10 apples up on top. This one's very basic because it's to help kids learn to read. So 8, 8, and we can skate. Look now, we can skate with 8. So it's a little bit basic really, but um, good for learning the numbers. I'd give that like a 3.25. And then this one was a solid 4. This is if I ran the circus. Um, and this is for like more advanced readers. After all, Mr. Sneelock is one of my friends. He might even help out doing small odds and ends. Doing little odd jobs he could be of some aid. Such as selling balloons and the pink lemonade. I think 500 gallons will be about right. And then I'll be ready for opening night. Alright guys, just got the one book to update you on today. And that is The Bicentennial Man by Isaac Asimov. So this has 12 of his stories in it. It's got The Prime of Life, Feminine Intuition, Water Clap, which I've read before. That Thou Art Mindful of Him, Stranger in Paradise, The Life and Times of Multivac, again read that one before too, The Winnowing, The Bicentennial Man, Marching In, Old Fashioned, The Tercentenary Incident and Birth of a Notion. I've actually also previously read uh, The Bicentennial Man by Robert Silverberg and Isaac Asimov. Basically Silverberg took Asimov's uh, novella and turned it into a novel but all the plot beats are pretty much the same so it felt as though I'd already read that short story but um, I did still enjoy it and overall this is a very strong collection of Asimov's uh, short stories I also like the fact that he introduces them all as well so there are little essays where he talks about the inspiration behind them all and their publishing history and stuff overall did enjoy it and I gave it a 4 out of 5 Hello! You can probably hear my printer going in the background. I've got two books to update you on today. So the first one is this one, which is The Tragedy of King Lear by William Shakespeare. Uh, one of his more famous plays, I suppose. It's one of his longer ones as well. Um, I actually found it hard to kind of keep my interest throughout it. I did think it was okay. Uh, I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5, but I think it was always going to struggle to hold its own uh, after I'd just read Julius Caesar, which I'd been really looking forward to. And so then we have Bernice Bob's Her Hair and other stories by F. Scott Fitzgerald. So um, this is like the second part after uh, I had the crack up and other stories. So this goes with that. Uh, there are how many stories we've got in here? Eight stories in here. So we have Bernice Bob's Her Hair, Winter Dreams, The Sensible Thing, Absolution, The Baby Party, A Short Trip Home, Magnetism, and The Rough Crossing. And yeah, I mean, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald's got like a really fairly unique writing style. I just love his stuff in general. Um, I think The Great Gatsby was my gateway drug, as it is with most people. And after that, I've just really been enjoying his short stories, to be honest. So I definitely would recommend it. I will say the crack up with other stories was probably the better of the two, though. Um, but I did enjoy the title story as well, all about our Bernice. So yeah, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. All right, I've got a couple of books to wrap up for you. So the first is The Harlequin Tea Set and Other Stories by Agatha Christie. Um, this is a US publication. Um, and basically, I've already read all the stories in this. So it's kind of a cheat almost saying that I read it because I've previously read it. And this time I just sort of dipped in and out and reread a few of the stories that I particularly enjoyed um, and sort of skimmed, skim read a bit as well. But uh, the stories it contains include The Edge, The Actress, While the Light Lasts, The House of Dreams, The Lonely God, Man Gold, that one was actually quite good. Within a Wall, uh, The Mystery of the Spanish Chest, also quite good, and The Harlequin Tea Set. Um, but basically, it's just While the Light Lasts, uh, that was the UK publication. It's just that with like three extra stories thrown in. And actually, the extra ones are some of the better stories in this as well. So overall, I find it kind of hard to recommend it. I gave it a three out of five. I mean, it is quite a cool edition. Um, I don't even know if it's still in print, but um, 
I mean, that's another one ticked off my Christie list. And then I read The Seven Dials Mystery, and um, this is one of the, uh, oh god, Inspector Race, I want to say. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, you could read this easily as a standalone as well. Um, and I really like this because I empathised with the murder victim, and that doesn't normally happen with Christie. So, um, the murder victim was like a, a, a like a, um, a spoiled young man who slept in too late, basically, which obviously reminded me of me. But also, um, the plot I thought was quite amusing. Basically, a bunch of his friends decide to play a practical joke on him by putting a load of alarms beneath his bed. Um, and the plan is to, like, they'll all go off and they'll wake him up. And um, when they do all go off, he doesn't come down. And they're like, wow, he slept through all these alarms. No, he didn't sleep through them, mate. Uh, he, uh, you know. So, yeah. Uh, actually really enjoyed this one. I gave this one a solid 4 out of 5 and would recommend. And I... Uh, tabbed it out to do a review as well. Alright guys, just got a few books to update you on today. So the first is As You Like It by William Shakespeare. I read this beautiful Folio Society edition. It's actually illustrated by Salvador Dali because they get the illustrations in it from like productions of the play at different times and stuff. Um, it was okay. Um, it had the famous like All the World's a Stage speech in it which I did quite enjoy because I've never seen that in its you know entirety before. But other than that, it's not really a particularly memorable play. I think it's quite a versatile one in terms of when you put them on because I think there's a lot you can do to reinterpret it. But just reading it, it was just alright. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. And then I read Star Over Bethlehem and Other Stories by Agatha Christie Mallowan. So this is Agatha Christie writing under her maiden name. Well, actually no, sorry, because I can't remember what her maiden name was. But then she married Archie Christie and then she married Max Mallowan. So Mallowan is like her second husband's name. Uh, as you can probably tell from the title of this, it's, it's a bit gaudy. Um, it's basically got a few kind of quite religious short stories and then the entirety of Christie's... Um, just, she's just got a book called Plays, um, which I happen to have already read, so I didn't really bother rereading that, so I just mostly read the short stories and the poems towards the start. Uh, still, I would give it like a 3.5 out of 5. Again, I'm not, not religious at all, so I think this would be much more enjoyable if you were, I, well, if you were super religious. But I enjoyed it because I'm quite a hardcore Christie fan, and I think that's the, like, the other category of people who might enjoy it. So yeah, 3.5 out of 5, it was okay. Alright guys, just got the one book to wrap up for you, and that is Cymbeline by William Shakespeare, possibly Cymbeline, I don't know. Uh, this is the Folio Society edition, so as you can see, it is very beautiful. Um, to be honest, the beauty of the edition probably eclipses the beauty of the play, at least in uh, this instance. Um, it's just very long and rambly, a lot of the main characters aren't even introduced until like a big old chunk into the play. Um, it's one of the longer of his plays, or at least of the ones that I've read recently. And I just think there's a reason why not too many people talk about it. I mean, it's still William Shakespeare, so you know. But uh, for me, it was like a 3 out of 5, and probably m one, probably my least favourite, actually, of all of the Shakespeare plays I've read, and I've read coming on for half now, so. Oh, a heckin' big hello. Um, I've got two books to talk to you about. So, the first is The Pretty Boys of Gangster Town by Martin Gray. And um, this is a poetry collection I've really been looking forward to reading. Um, he has a poem called Fish, Chips, Bread and Butter and a Cigarette. Uh, there's a read, uh, video of him doing it on YouTube. I'll try and remember to link below on the Fly on the Wall um, um, uh, YouTube. I'm going to read you the title poem, The Pretty Boys of Gangster Town. Um, even though I think my favourite is probably Fish, Chips, a Bread and Butter and a Cigarette, but obviously you can just go and watch him read that, so you don't need to see me. Also, I'm aware, look how long my hair has got. It's gone, it's got so long, it's gone curly at the ends again. I need, I need to cut it. Anyway, Pretty Boys of Gangster Town. Get your swank on, mate. Get yourself down. The boys are on their way to G-Town. Be in Yates's by 8 o'clock and learn to flirt with the ladies you spock. G was for Guildford, G was for Gangster, and those were the words of our Al Capone when small town boys sought small town joys every Saturday night. From the Bridge Street bars to bows just down, past every place to be in a three club town, we'd eyeball the bouncers to check our IDs at every room of sharp shirted boners, sniffing rah rahs with skirts as high as stoners with their endless mum and dad funds. Daddy's little dirt boxes deflowered during every night I never showered, with every failed attempt to plunder, solved by a sours or a tactical chunder, until eleven, when everything shut but bows the drink and Cinderella's. 
How they'd flight the alphas when they'd bring. How they'd mock the homeless by Burger King. A mating call for all the fellas from our links affected lack of shame and how tonight we're off the cocaine. But for small town 18 and all that it seemed, I lost my faith in their hand-me-down dreams. Yet through all the strawpedos and a little bad sex, I'd always arise to their cries in their eyes as I learnt to party with a frown with the pretty boys of gangster town. Their adulthood looked effortless, as younger me had been, in scruffy clothes, in scruffy Murphys, where the bouncers were bruisers, the bar was obscene, and the pints of pipe cleaner drowned every last thought for a pair of tenors and a photocopy of my passport. The taught as innocence was not to be trusted on the day my dear old scruffies got busted, but the pretty boys were unaware of any other kind of care, and any time I'd hark on back, my dear old scruffies came under attack. I tried to copy how the pretty boys lived, with every last fiver every cash point would give, on semi-alert for the tosses and tools from the daily misery of secondary school. I'm wondering if anyone would ever understand why their town was far from a wonderland. Just the same old streets of photocopied times, where it mattered whose dads earned more than mine. I learnt those nights, I learnt them well, I learnt that gangster town was hell, that small towns make big choices, that small towns amplify small voices, that small towns misfits finish last, that small towns trap you in their future and your past. Gangster town where I was from, gangster town where I didn't belong, a town that years ago ceased to exist when the pretty boys abandoned station, leaving the night to a new generation, unaware of the ghost of a stranger called me who meets my eyes with a party frown when I take a walk down Bridge Street through the remnants of gangster town. My ghost looks intently as I grow older, at the former sight of the chip on my shoulder, that put my roots under secret duress when they failed at his idea of success, as if no other town had pretty boys out drinking their cares in awful bars, and no other town would have made me slate the fate I found, infused and fading, convol infused and fading convolutions of teenage confusion. But although I'm locked to that party frown, I clutch a key to my small Surrey town, to the nights behind the Bridge Street walls that built walls in my mind, to ha to how somewhere in all those hand-me-down dreams I found everybody's dreams but mine. A fallow frown, copyright of a little place some teenage once was called. Copyright of a little place some teenagers once called Gangster Town. I mean that could be talking about Tamworth where I grew up. Obviously as you can tell, really enjoyed this collection, probably my top poetry collection of the year. I gave it a 5 out of 5. Uh, I tend to be uh, more high or low with my with my poetry ratings. Um, I find poetry tends to hit the ends of the spectrum and either be really good or really bad, whereas most novels are pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely recommend. Hello everyone, I have a few books to wrap up. Um, the first one is The Tourist Guide to Bletchley Park. So I visited uh, Bletchley Park and we got The Tourist Guide. It's about 70 odd pages. Um, there was a lot of social distancing in place and a lot of queuing, so I actually read that while we were going around. But it was pretty interesting, quite informative. I gave that a 4 out of 5. I can't show it to you because um, my mum wanted to keep it as a souvenir, so I let her keep it. Um, I've also, while I was in Tamworth, Visiting my mum, I read Dance Macabre by Stephen King. This is non-fiction, and it's kind of part memoir and part him investigating like the history of horror, both in uh, literature and in movies and TV as well. Uh, it came out in like 1982 or something, so it's quite dated. Uh, he talked about the Ramones being this hot new punk band, for example, which was kind of funny. Overall, yeah, I did enjoy it. I gave it a 4 out of 5, and as you can see, I've tabbed it out to do a full review. Um, yeah, it's... If you're into horror or Stephen King, and let's be honest, if you're into one, you're probably into the other, then, uh, yeah, it's worth reading. Four out of five. Full review coming. And then the final book I read was Paws and Claws, an anthology of cat poetry in association with the Cats Protection League. Um, it was, I mean, it's quite an old book now. I think it was, like, published in 1995, but it was, um... not really my kind of poetry. I'll read you an example here. This is Sophisticat by Gareth Owen. Oliver Oliver Tortoiseshell quit his home at Dingley Dell, where he had gone not to, where he had gone to, no one was sure, till he sent us a card from the Côte d'Azur. There you may see him every day, strolling the promenade des Anglais. Tips his hat and winks an eye to society ladies passing by. His cane's malacca, his tie just so, his suit's handmade on Savile Row. Never was seen such a transformation, never such feline sophistication. Get off me, I've got an hand on me. Yet in one respect he remains as before, for when hunger strikes him at quarter to four, to the Café de Paris he'll repair to claim his favourite table where he takes a breath then raises his head and howls and meows until he gets fed. So the best bit in this really were the illustrations that came throughout it. Um, it is also like a charity collection, although I got it um, at the Tesco Book Exchange and paid 50p for it. It was okay for 50p. Definitely don't go out of your way for this one though really. I gave it like a, a 3 out of 5.
So there we have it, that is my August 2020 wrap up. As always, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.